Hello! We are starting the stream. It's a little earlier than I've been doing them lately. Um, mainly because I was just up earlier. But we are continuing the same run of Banjo-Tooie that we started in the last stream. And I think this was it. Yes. This is also going to be a pretty short stream. Uh, I got errands to run later, so... For now, we're just gonna go pretty straightforward and continue working on Glitter Gulch Mine. I think I have a little bit of Mayhem Temple still that I might go back and do, but I think I'm, I might need some other uh, abilities first. No viewers. It's been a while since I've had no viewers. That's fine. It's it's partially because of the time, I'm sure. Um, but hopefully some folks will come in and start watching in just a minute. This is gonna be a bit more chill. Oops. Got a little too used to the uh, the, the um. Uh, Grunty's Revenge Controls, <coughs> where you don't have to keep button held down when you do the strut, whatever that's called. You just gotta run in here. And here is the bane of my existence, Canary Mary. She's not too hard here, but later on in the game she becomes actively impossible. She's the reason we're not going to be able to 100% this run, and um, I, I may still try later on, but for the time being, I'm not guaranteeing a 100% run specifically because of Canary Mary and the fourth challenge with her. This also, this really encapsulates the, like, larger issue with this game versus the original, where, um, that whole bit just now should have only taken about half a second, but because they decided to stop and have two separate cutscenes, including this, where we just watch her fly so that we know where she goes to, it, it, it's really unnecessary. And I didn't mention it last time because, um... I had my my uh, sometimes co-host Andrew on uh, commentating at the time, but the bit with the crusher shed with um, Mumbo is also like that. Like it, it's just so so long. I'm pretty sure that specific one is something that um, video game donkey uses his example of why this game kind of fails compared to the original. And I can agree, it's it's not not super solid. But I don't mind as much. I guess part of it is similar to uh, similar to how people have said that all of the waiting in Ocarina of Time does not bug them that much. And a large part of it is just like the nostalgia, specifically of they were younger when they did it, so it didn't bug them nearly as much at the time, but now, if they if they had played it now, they, they would be completely infuriated by how much waiting there is. Here we go, the first of four races. This one is just, this one's stupid easy. Oh. 
Yep, yep. Just gotta tap X. It's just a tap game. It's pretty easy in the beginning. But the, the it's the same one. There are four of these races. Two here and two in Cloud Cuckoo Land, which is the one of the later levels. Um, and the Cloud Cuckoo Land one. The second Cloud Cuckoo Land one is impossible. And it's specifically because it's the Xbox version that makes it so difficult. Uh, they've directly said, like, they messed up the programming for that and made it just impossible it was nearly impossible on the n64 to begin with like that was incredibly difficult but like in this version you can do it but you have to either have a a turbo controller which i am not really willing to shell out for a turbo controller for a single game or you have to um just learn the technique and i've gotten real close like a number of times but yeah it's it's pretty much impossible all right we did it kicked her ass And then yeah canary mary is an an odd bird which she's she's just an old lady bird creature but she she's definitely one of the the fun quirky bits of flavor that you get in the banjo kazooie games And then yeah, this second second race here is pretty easy as well. Mostly just tedious, honestly, like it's it's there's very little challenge at this point. And because it is literally on rails, it means that there's not like while they do have these fun cinematic angles and everything they don't um don't really give you a lot of fun decisions to make or anything doesn't really feel that skillful you're just mashing a button oh good a viewer yes her that's the second i i've gotten through half of her races now so i will i'll count that pretty good but yeah, this, whew, I'll probably, uh, after I've done everything else in the game, I will likely come back around and try and, uh, try and 100% it by, uh, just doing a full stream of trying to beat her. Can't guarantee I'll be able to, to be honest. I never have. So, I mean, I did on the N64. It was on my brother's, uh, account. And he was pretty shocked that I had been able to. Because I, I basically, none of us had played Banjo-Tooie in a while. And I just turned it on and was running around in his account. Because he'd gotten so much farther than me. And, uh, yeah. I, I just did it on a whim and was able to beat her the first time. So, that is probably not going to happen again. Now we're going to go do... Oh, wait. Actually, I think I need to be Mumbo for this. So let me go to Mumbo's skull. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, good. And the audio went out. I don't know why the Elgato has such trouble with audio. Hopefully that will have done something doesn't look like it so that's frustrating all 
All right. Hey, Mumbo. Yeah, you don't have to go through this whole thing. I... T I... I... Uh, that's another thing. It's like... This is, like, cool that you can play as Mumbo, but it's like, why do I have to walk into the skull, walk all the way up to a second floor, and go through a dialogue where he has to confirm that I want to do it? Because, like, if I accidentally got Mumbo... I could cancel out immediately, so I don't see why... I don't see why it's such a hassle. It seems oddly obtuse. Yeah, I do want to, at some point, compare these. Um, there's a video that you can find. This guy, Nintendo Capri Sun, made a video that he called the fake sequelitis. And, uh... He he made two of them. He made one about Super Metroid versus Metroid, which was really him just gushing about Super Metroid and uh, just wholesale stealing jokes directly from, um, directly from the Mega Man X sequelitis by Ego Raptor. So that video sucks. But then he also did one, another one on, um. On Banjo Kazooie versus Banjo Tooie, and that one's a little more interesting because a it's one that Aaron Hansen would never do. Um, if he were ever to do another sequelitis, he's not even said he's working on one. But uh, also, it's like he actually makes some good points. Still not very comprehensive or well presented, though. I would say I, I feel like his presentation is pretty, pretty lacking. But. I uh I will probably at some point do a video comparing comparing this to that and really just comparing the whole series. Honestly, like I uh I just want to do I, I want to do like a video just reviewing effectively or at least analyzing all of the Banjo Kazooie games. But that would mean playing Nuts and Bolts, which I really don't want to do because Nuts and Bolts is pure trash. And I hate it. And it's bad. Oh, good. Three viewers now. Thank you for watching, folks. Uh, if you could do me a favor and follow if you have not, it is free and it would greatly help me. Um, but in any case, thank you for watching at the very least. I really appreciate that. I'm doing my best to make it entertaining. I apologize that the game audio is currently out. My Elgato, for some reason, just cuts the audio off sometimes, and it'll just randomly come back in, and I don't really know uh, don't really know what to do about that. I can guarantee that actually, like, talking to Elgato's support about it would not be very helpful. Whoop. Watch out now. All right. Uh... Let's see, I want to do... Just want to just wanna hit him with some egg. This guy is not too difficult. It's, it's one of the easier boss fights, mainly because it's one of the first ones. And it's just a matter of just whacking him with eggs. A lot of bosses in this are... Uh, uh, that's one thing I do really like about this compared to the original is that there are actually like a decent amount of boss fights, whereas in the original game there's only like, not counting Grunty herself, there's only like a couple boss fights total. Throughout the whole game. There's like the 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 box that you fight, boom box. Um, there's uh uh the the guy at Treasure Trove Cove. I don't remember what his name was. There's a few. Yeah, it's really important to get this guy early on because he is... He allows you to open up the fast travel for the rest of the game, which is really, really important because, in fact, uh, for a later level, Grunty's Industries... Grunty Industries, rather... 
uh, it's literally the only way to get into that level. There, there's like a, a, the majority of the level is blocked off. Where's the way out? Is that it? No, that's not it. Oh boy, everything's dark now. There it is. Okay. Ah. Uh, always kind of scared me being in there. You can't go back in, I'm pretty sure. No, yeah, I guess you can. But um Yeah, now we have Chuffy the train. Nowhere else for Chuffy to go at the moment, but we have access to that now and each level has a train station that you can access, which is a welcome addition, especially considering, uh, A, how interconnected all the levels are, so you really have to, like, be able to jump back and forth between them a lot, and B, how huge this world is in comparison to the last game. Like, it's, it is gargantuan, and so being able to hop between them with the uh, train is very useful. Can I go up in here? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just the entire minecart track is available because of the Canary Mary race. Let's see. What do I do next? Um, Got that. Got that. How many of the jiggies do I have? Uh, oh, whoop. I did not mean to do the Jinjos. Totals. Half. Half of them. Okay. Eh, not great, but not terrible. I know uh, some of them are just going into the tunnels. I honestly really hate this level. It's really hard to navigate because there's so many different just ran like uh, all of the areas are really hard to tell apart and it's a lot of just junk. Random junk. Let's see water storage. No, I don't want to be in here. Um I don't think I can even do much in here until later. Oh, wow, five viewers. Awesome. Thank you for watching, folks. I apologize for the audio being out. <laughs> I, I, I keep having to say that. Uh, the audio is just an issue with my capture card that sometimes happens where it just doesn't capture audio. And, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll come back on its own at some point, but there's not much I can do about it. Uh, I'm actually going to leave this level for now and come back... Come back to it later, which is usually my my modus operandi when it comes to this game, especially like with the original Banjo Kazooie. Um, it was more pertinent that you like try and get everything as you were in there, especially because with the the music notes, if you didn't get them all at once, you didn't get all of them, which was really really annoying. And I'm glad they changed that for the Xbox version, which is what I'm playing. Um. But for the for this game, it's actually encourages you to hop back and forth because it's uh it's all interconnected. All of the different levels are connected in one way or another. And it does a lot more um, whereas in the original, most of mo pretty much all of the moves didn't become, like, weren't used until after you would have learned them naturally. In this one, it, like, actively puts moves that you won't learn until later in the earlier levels so that you have to go back. Which makes it more, like, meshed and interconnected, but also kind of makes it annoying because there's uh, a lot more backtracking. I personally feel like it was very ambitious. Maybe to its detriment, but who knows. This one especially, like this uh this line of the the boggy kids, they uh they set this one up so that like you there's stuff you don't get for like two or three worlds that you have to keep jumping back to do. 
um, to be able to get all of them. Burger man. Ah, my foot's asleep. I had my legs, my feet crossed. Now my freaking foot's all tingly. Ah, uh, hold on. Hold on. Ah. Gotta shake it out. Ah. God damn it. Ah! Ah, the guy! Okay. Uh, uh, I have mostly full health, so I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Uh, whoop. Pretty sure you just gotta... Nope. Oh, wait. Uh, to do this one, you... Grenade egg, right? Yes. There we go. And let's go over here. And then this little bit is a little bit tricky. The thing, too, is with having it where um, some of the stuff you can only accomplish with moves you learn later, it sometimes makes you overthink moves or even underthink uh, parts where you where you uh, do the thing. Sorry, I'm kind of tired. I got up at like 4 a.m. <laughs> so my braid is woo, not fully here. Um, but you sometimes like just assume that you're going to be able to learn how to do something later. When in reality, like that with the notes, as a kid, I never figured out that part because I thought that it was just, you just, you just got to learn it later. But in reality, you can just do it. All right, this one is a little messed up, so he's uh, a bit of a petulant child, and so to get him to go back, you have to hit him. <laughs> it's really messed up. But, yeah, that's one I didn't figure out as a kid, because I was like, what are you supposed to do? I don't, like, he's a kid, you can't just hit him. You're just supposed to run into him. It's a bit messed up, but... Done it. It's done. Don't at me. Ooh, can I get on top? Ah, nearly. Nearly did it. Didn't quite make it. Um, I think this might be one where it's got the footprints on the side. Yeah. Which, there are ways around that, but as it stands, we'll just wait until later. Not in any kind of rush. This is all entertainment, baby. It does really suck that there's no audio right now because this is some of my favorite music in the entire series is in this one. Honestly, Grunty in, uh, Grunty World is my favorite level in the entire series. It's just, it's so creative. The music is so good. And there's just like so much to do it's like really unsettling too because like there's only pretty much just us and like a handful of other people at this park so this huge area is mostly empty Oof. i don't know it's just it's a little spooky and i like it whoop All right, coming over to get the yellow guy. Yeah, this is also the game where they introduced uh, the Minjos. Minjos? I think Minjos. And they're, uh, they are evil Jinjos that just attack you and you just can't do anything about it you even if you hit them it just kind of knocks them away for a second and then they're right back at you which is annoying especially if, if you're trying to be completionist about it and you're trying to find jinjos mm. yeah a lot more a lot more antagonism in this one you idiot i'm stealing your globo right from out from under you um but yeah, especially, especially for that, because it's like it's the the Jinjos can fight you, 
And also sometimes the like honeycomb boxes will come at you and they still give you the honeycombs, but man, it's, it's frustrating. This is also like such a great transformation. As Nintendo Capri Sun pointed out in his video, it was like that there's so much more like metallic industrialization stuff here. Like a lot of the uh a lot of the transformations that you do in this one are all like metal and me mechanical. Like like this one is whoa. This one is um, the truck, and then later you can turn into a submarine and a uh, laundry machine, which they reused from Banjo-Kazooie, where sometimes, as a joke, uh, 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 Mumbo could accidentally turn you into a laundry machine. It's never happened to me. And all the times I've played it, but I, I hear that it's a thing that can be done. Woo! Alright, gotta get all these guys, because we have to have tickets to go into the big top. Gotta have enough tickets for the big top. With Conga, our buddy from the original, throwing oranges. Let's see, and you as well, Krang. And I guess I can't get that. The um, yeah, the the this guy that we are now, the truck is like, doesn't take damage, I think. So, or maybe it's just because I'm at full health. Am I at full health? I think I am. I don't. Know. I don't really need to check it because at the very least I'm at a high enough health. Activate. Get him. Get him. Nice. Beep. That's uh, to open those. I'm honking my horn. Unfortunately, you cannot hear because the audio is out. Meh. M cry. Oh jeez. Oh jeez, hold on. I gotta turn my monitor. Gotta turn my monitor brightness up. Cause this is a really dark part of the game. Oof. This entire world is like, yeah, just really low low light. Look, yeah, see? Okay, I guess you can kill them as this guy, but the Minjos, they are a pain because they still like trick you and they still shout at you like they're a Jinjo, but there's nothing you can really do about them. You can stun them, but only briefly. That is what the music would sound like if you could hear it, but it's not going out. Let me get this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's really that many Jinjos over the entire game, but they like, they're very careful about doling them out in very small batches. Let me, uh, let me do something really quick to see if I can fix the audio here. Hold on, let me see if I can maybe... Eh? 
Did that do it? No, that did not do it. Maybe if I see if that works. Nope. Well, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, we just gotta gotta deal with it. Unfortunate. My apologies. Like I, I'm doing my best with the equipment I have. This is like the standard equipment. This is what they expect you to use. Like generally, like the Elgato is the standard for video capture. I guess there's also the Aver Media capture card, although I've heard different things about that. I guess there's also the Elgato uh the capture card that goes into the computer, which I could still technically use with this. Just uh, didn't feel like shelling out extra for something that I can only kind of use. Let's see. And then, uh, ah, nope. Wait, that's just how you get back up to Humba. And over here, this is got to unlock it with the coins. Got to pay. Gotta pay to get in. The, those are the big things. Like, this is the most versatile of the transformations in the game, too. It's like, you can honk, you can run stuff over, and you can pay tolls. It's pretty impressive, I gotta say. Ooh, wow, we're pretty close to uh, 200 views on here. That's pretty cool. I've only been doing this for like a little while. And I mean, on, obviously my channel is not uh, very big still. Since I'm only averaging about three views a video, a stream, whatever. But like, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty satisfying to like reach those milestones, you know? 200 views will be a, a decent milestone. I'm just, I'm doing my best. It's difficult. Uh, ah, the Globo. Gimme. There he is. He is mine. All right, and I think that's everything we need. Ooh, I think that's everything we need the money van for. Maybe, hold on, let me double check. Let me double check the other Inferno spaces, see if there's anything else. Uh, nope, not here. The Haunted Cavern, by the way. I mean, you could see it in the demos on the title screen. Holy crap, it's so spooky. Like with the big old dragon teeth popping out. It's a train station. Do I need it? Do I need the money van here? Is there something else I need to pay for? Pretty sure. Pretty sure there's another payment box somewhere. Well, for the time being, I'm going to switch back around, probably run over and do the mumbo stuff. Oh. And while I'm at it, may as well pop open the fries. Yeah, yeah, I think I might take actually a quick break and see if I can figure out this audio situation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that. BRB. I'm going to figure out why why I cannot hear the audio so. Uh and that's
Okay. Okay. Fixed it. Apologies for the uh, mic stand noise. Uh, yeah, I just had to basically unplug the HDMI leading out of the Elgato and plug it back in. And in uh, doing so, uh, yeah, cut my thumb a little bit. So that's unfortunate. Ugh, it's in a spot where the, uh, the bandage will not stay down very well. All right, we are continuing, and now we get to hear the awesome music. I'm gonna head over to Mumbo and get his business done. Actually, let's pick up the fries since we're right here. Uh, the, his voice sounds like, um, it might be the same guy who does Trouser in Ukulele, which makes sense since it's a lot of the same people. Uh, Ukulele I might play as well at some point. Um, it's not very good. I'll say that now. It's really disappointing after how pretty good these games are. But that being said, it's not terrible. I've definitely played worse games, it's just so disappointing. Compared to such a good game. While Jam Jars goes off, I'm gonna just, uh... Throat spray. It's a bit tired. All right. So now we can use the split-up pads, which means you just stand here and, uh, whoop. Bam, now we are separate. Now you can play as just Banjo or just Kazooie, and they share a health bar, like it's split down the middle. Wait, let me up. Come on, I know I can get up there. I always preferred to do this as Kazooie, because it was always a little easier that way. But, uh, uh come on. Son of a bitch, come on! It's kind of gotta take it slow. Real slow, like. Oh, come on. Never mind, I'll do that later. It's a little frustrating. So I'd rather just leave that. Oh, watch out. Whoa. Uh, this... I always thought was pretty, uh... Pretty intimidating. Considering that it's not... It's supposed to be a ride, not like a show. Where you just jump into a tiny, tiny bucket. But uh, that is all in service of this bit up here. Uh, it's on this side, yes. One thing I always liked is that as you go up, the audio just cuts out. 
it's just real quiet. That's really, really scary. This bit is not that difficult. So, they make it look like it's going to be difficult because it's so thin, but it's not that bad. And then, yeah, just the gentle air, the wind blowing by. Oof. Missed. That's okay, because it's just a simple... Alright. Into the train station. I like how Grunty is still running the park. Like, even though we're enemies, she's just like, you still gotta follow the rules of my park, though. You know? It's, it's cute. Burger. He wants the burger. Pretty sure the girl wanted the, uh... The fries. She's over in the West World, I think? Or, uh, oh, right, I forgot I was gonna hit the switch. The train switch isn't always in the station, but I believe this time it is. Yeah, you gotta... Gotta get up there. I think you go off of this. Whoop, watch out. Careful now. Fine. If you insist. There we go. Climb up there. You just, yep, onto the crack. And bada boom! Just gotta whoop, crawl my way along. Those guys also, like, so many of the new enemies are really scary compared to the original. Fix my mic a little bit. It's a little off kilter. There we go. Opened up, so now I can travel back here or out of here at any point. And there are ways to, uh, there is a way to call the train to the station, so you don't have to worry about it getting stuck or anything like that. Which I remember as a kid when I figured out how to uh, get the train into Grunty Industries, but then I couldn't figure out how to get it back out. That was a big, big revelation, was that you could just do whatever. Let me do this bit real quick. Right. I remember now. Gotta split up first. Then it's Banjo. Run over there and weed it down. And there should be, yes. Little particles mean that that is a swap cloud. So you can switch between the two. Now I just gotta get, get on up. These guys make it easier to actually jump over those guys. It gives me very uh, Super Mario 64 vibes, like when you're going up in Bob on Battlefield. You gotta, you gotta dodge the fallen rocks. Ah. That's fine. Let me, let me do that again. See, this one, in this one, they abolished the, the live count. So you can just go infinitely. Like, between the first one, two years prior, and this one, two years later, they realize that it's like, hey, there's no reason to have the lives. That doesn't actually make it... Harder just makes it more frustrating. 
like, lives were a bigger thing in arcade games because they would force you to put more quarters in and give them more money. But in, uh, in a console game, it doesn't really make sense to have lives. Because that just punishes your player to an extreme degree. It's so unnecessary and really just frustrating. Alright, there we go. And then we'll just... Oof. Okay, I'm just gonna run. Run down then. I thought I'd be able to handle a little more abuse, but that guess I could not. We'll run back over to Banjo. Yeet. There we go. I'm glad it doesn't give you the little cutscene again, but it does give you the noise so that you know that it's still broke. Now this is one thing, there is an evil mumbo later in the game. Um, in a separate mumbo, like, uh, tower. Skull? Skull. Uh, but this one that looks like a literal devil is just for aesthetic. Because this, this is the same mumbo as always. He's a chill dude. Much more chill than he was in the original game. Although he did go on vacation and stuff in the original. Yep, yeah, yeah. Take the take the globo. I also prefer the globos to the uh, mumbo tokens. The mumbo tokens were kind of tedious. Because you'd have to go and find a few. I mean, nowadays when I play it, like, you can just ignore a lot of the mumbo tokens because they give you way more than you need. Um, but yeah, just having the globo, which is always somewhere nearby uh, Humba and Mumbo, but it's still like a short little scavenger hunt. That's kind of fun. It's kind of nice. All right. So now we got to go power up the space world and... I think there's something Mumbo's got to do in the Western world. Actually, it might just be the space world. The Star Spinner. But usually, you only have a couple things you gotta do with Mumbo in any of the worlds. Ooh. And there's the pad. And now we just watch. It might look like I am be I am off beat right now, but that's mainly because my monitor is gonna be slightly delayed from you guys. Good old Grant, Grant, Grant Kirkhope's voice. As uh, anyone who watches classic Game Grumps will know, which apparently they're actually finally taking out all of the JonTron segments from classic Game Grumps, which uh, I won't really comment on here. You can have your own feelings about that, but. It's just, it's surprising to me that, um, that Aaron is actually taking that step and distancing himself from Dontron. So, it's bold, at the very least. I, I can appreciate that. It takes some guts to do that. Listen, Krant Gurkope is a good man with a silly name. It is pretty surprising. Um, you know, it's, the, it's, it was already a little bit like, eh, it, it was a little bit like watching some of those older ones, it was like, it, 
it, it was a different feel from the current Game Grumps, and I'd honestly say kind of worse, because JonTron wasn't a great influence on Eren. He made him a lot more obnoxious, and it gave it a more frat boy kind of feel. And yeah, uh, some things like watching the, the Banjo-Kazooie run they did was kind of shocking. Because there, there's a point in there where JonTron just drops an N-bomb, and it's, it's, yeah, really inappropriate. So, it's, it's kind of good for their image to not include his stuff anymore. Well, yeah, the, the posterity is one thing, but it's like, with a, a with a channel as popular as Game Grumps, like, they, it's definitely archived. Like, somebody has them download somewhere, and I'm sure if you look them up, you can find on a separate channel all the JonTron stuff. I'm sure it'll be called, like, Game Grumps JonTron era or something. And there's still the internet archive. I'm sure somebody, like, did a capture of those videos specifically. Alright. One thing I do like about the Minjos is that they are kind of randomized and that they change the actual, like, the, they change color each time you see them. And if you do end up, like, destroying one, they'll come back, but, like, they'll be a different color, which makes it a little more clear that they are a Minjo. Well... I don't think they're necessarily aligned opposite. The main thing is that JonTron is just kind of immature in his politics. More than anything. Like, you can recognize that, like, Eren was also similar to that. That, like, frat boy kind of immature humor. I mean, for fuck's sake, he was on Newgrounds and stuff. And he's still, like, friends with those guys. But, like... It's, um... Yeah, it's Aaron moved more towards like actually learning about things and recognizing how what the responsibilities he has as uh, an entertainer at the level that he's at are, and he decided to actually be responsible about it. Whereas John Tron decided to take the route of I shouldn't need to care, which more than anything just. Yeah, just, yeah, responsible is pretty much the word for it. Like, it's irresponsible to pretend like what you do does not have an impact. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's also interesting to watch, like, Game Grumps versus, like, Aaron being a guest on, like, Oni Plays at the same time, and having much, even more crass language, um, and I'm not, I'm definitely not talking about swearing, like, swearing is whatever, like, that's your own prerogative, but, uh, yeah, no, there was, there was slurs, and he's said since, like, yeah, I would not speak like that now, but I can't deny that I did at the time. And I'm I'm glad that he's willing to uh, willing to face that because I mean there's shit like some of the awesome series cartoons like even have some real crass language of that sort. It's not so much about making mistakes as recognizing the mistakes were made and being willing to make amends for them. Nope, uh, I think I got a... a poof. Nope. That wasn't it. 
Trying to remember how you open these. Because if it's not grenade eggs. Mm. Hmm. Here's old Gobi from the first game. He's still trying to make his way to the lava level. The lava world. He's been here so long, he's grown a, a lush beard. There must be a switch or something. I'll have to, uh, have to figure that out later. In the meantime, let's get to the end of these. It's mainly how, like, organic this part looks that makes it really creepy. Like, it just looks real spooky. Um. Oh, wait. No? I can't grab onto that crack? Oh, I can't. I can grab onto that part. Pretty sure this just takes me... Oh, well, it takes me here, at least. And then that just takes me back to the entrance. It's also that you gotta walk into these spooky mouths. It's a little scary. It's a little scary. All right, I think that's everything for Inferno. Until I can figure out how to open those. Um, let's switch over to this region, the uh, western side. Let's see, and this always gave me trouble. Pretty sure you're supposed to that. Then like a grenade egg. Uh, yeah, then a grenade egg. And then you Oh, there we go. As a kid I never got that. I had to look it up uh, in a walkthrough last time I played it. It's mainly the grenade egg that threw me off. I could always get the first part, but I never got how you were supposed to do the rest of it. But thankfully, finally got it, got it done. Thank goodness for the internet. Now I can broadcast my idiocy for you all to see. Whoop. Come on now. Come on now. Whoop, whoop. There we go. Now this part is a little nerve-wracking. We got tightrope walk. Ooh. Well, I guess I could have just climbed. Yeah, I'll just do that. It's a little easier. Now I can get this. There we go, and now we can travel between. And since I'm up here, we'll head over to Space Zone. Gives you a little preview of other areas to come. And it gets you up here. Yeah. In an area you otherwise would have a great difficulty reaching. Oh, give me the give me the honey. Honey come. Honey come. Uh. Alright, let's Yep. 
Nope. Guess not. Uh, I think that is an, a space that you can get to... by... Another beads! How do you do this? How do you do this again? Then can I just get from up here? Ah, oh, right. Oh yeah, it's a little annoying because they're trying to challenge you with this bit. I mean, it's just timing, so it's not really that that tricky. But it's better than nothing. Could be very, very dull otherwise. Ah, yes. Now we have a shortcut up here because we're about to unlock something from earlier. You might remember from last time our buddy in the box over in uh, Glitter Gulch Mine. He is free! And now we can play a game. It's time for the saucer apparel. And this is just a rail shooter. But yeah, blue, blue, green, red in that order. I should be able to get this in a couple tries. I'm not great at it. But because they're uh, gold eggs, it's not too tricky. Just gotta hold on the the triggers. Gotta go for this. Oh, yep. Oh, my aim is terrible. This is another one that as a kid I had the worst trouble with. This part's pretty fun. I mean, I've always liked rail shooters, especially like arcade ones like House of the Dead and stuff. Um, and it's always in like the same shape, if not always the same configuration. And it gives you enough time that honestly, this is probably not that hard for people who are actually good at, actually good at like FPSs and stuff. I, however, am really bad at them, so... Yeah, I'm not doing great, I don't think. Oh, come on, come on. And the constant bring, bring, bring noises of the bell as I hit them is a little frustrating. At least a little irritating. Oh, oh. They're, they're like specific landmarks I remember as a kid. Anytime I played this, I'd uh, pay attention to those landmarks of like, if you don't have a specific score by this point, then you may as well just give up. Because it's always the same path, and I believe it's always the same configurations at the same points in the paths as well. Whoa! Whoa! Tricked us! And I think this part's a little different if you have the castle inflated. It might just be a visual thing. good. We're on point to get at least the 400. I don't know if I'll get the 500 on this try, but, uh... Yeah, we're just gonna go along. I believe it's just one loop around. And then it uh, parks near the entrance, so we're pretty close to done. I think I might have already missed any chance I had to, uh... get the 500. But... We got the second prize, which is still pretty good. I believe it's a Cheeto page. 466. 
That's not bad. I had a pretty rough beginning, so I'll probably try that part again. Yep, there's a Cheeto page, so. Grab that, give it one more shot. Alright. Let's get it again. Don't need to give me a tutorial again, I just played it. Alright. Here we go. Now that I'm warmed up, should be able to get a much better score this time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, already doing better. I think, anyways, I mean... Maybe I look like a complete fool and I'm just doing terribly. Y'all can be the judge. What's the point of having an audience if they can't mercilessly judge you for your video game skills? can't get it on this time guys I think uh, I think I might not get that G fuel sponsorship I'm just saying they might not want somebody who can't get this in two tries but who knows they're wily kids over G fuel and shoot they sent uh, sent Jenny Nicholson a bunch of free G fuel and she's not even like into games? I mean, I guess she has a decent subscriber count, but that's just because she has a fan base. It's not really like a video game person as she would attend to. She did, watching her streams, uh, it makes me really kind of want to try uh, the, the PewDiePie G Fuel. Not because I like PewDiePie, I fucking hate the guy, um, but his G Fuel, because he's Swedish, is Lincolnberry flavored. I do really like lingonberry, so I think that could be tasty. Alright, here's where, here's where the big points are made. And the crazy castle. Yeah, as a kid I would just kind of like go nuts on this part. Yeah, PewDiePie's pretty awful. Really, really despise that man. He's a bad example for all, all gamers. If you want to watch a, if you want to watch a gamer, don't even watch me. Watch a Markiplier. Markiplier is a good man. The good soul. Some good content. Highly, highly recommend him over PewDiePie any day. No! Ah, uh, 493! Yep, definitely not getting that sponsorship. Oh well. I'll be honest, I wouldn't stop. I wouldn't stop them from sponsoring me or anything, but the sponsorship I'd want more than G Fuel is, um, if you look up on YouTube, KFC has a, a gaming channel, KFC Gaming, uh, and a big thing that they do is they'll just go into moderate sized streams and be like, hey, if you do blank and blank challenge right now, we'll give you free KFC for a year. You know what? I would take that challenge in a heartbeat, but don't think this is quite a big enough channel to earn that potential. Oh yeah! Uh, what is it, Two Kinds or something the Markiplier's brother does? Listen, I'm not going to judge.
You'll never hear me claiming not to be a furry. Let's be real though, like, furrydom is like something that's so nebulous to begin with. And if you even go back in history, like Aesop was a furry. All of his characters were animals and stuff, and they were like, definitely anytime there were illustrations, they would be like anthropomorphized. Disney's been doing anthropomorphized animals for decades. Like, um, R. Crumb, I mean, that's usually what people point to is like, oh, R. Crumb was a lunatic. He, he was sexually attracted to Bugs Bunny, and it's like, so? What does it matter? It literally does not hurt anybody because, like, you can't even do anything about it. Um, but, like, if you can look me in the eye and say that you have never once seen an anthropomorphized animal character as, at the very least, appealing, not even necessarily attractive, just appealing, then, uh, gotta tell ya. Um, I would call anyone who claims that to be a liar. You wanna fuck Nala. Don't, don't try and, don't try and lie to me. I think it's also because so many people assume furry is, is sexual. It's like, you don't have to be... Like, it, it can be a platonic thing, and it's just an enjoyment of things that involve anthropomorphic animals. To the point where, like, so many people are included in it that don't want to, like, admit it, that... You know, honestly, like... It's kind of detrimental to pretend, like... Um... People aren't... Kind of all in that? Like, I can't... I can't think of a single person who doesn't enjoy at least one anthropomorphic animal thing. Zootopia, some Disney thing. 41, damn it! Sorry, let me catch up on chat before I try this next run. KFC potato wedges. I can't eat fried potato anymore. It makes me break out really hard, so gotta, gotta put that on the back burner. I gotta save fried potatoes for special occasions. Um, I, I would say that R. Crumb was not even really that good, but he was such a proponent of uh, indie comics at the time. So it's, it's, it's really, he, he, he's influential and important as far as that goes, but as far as his comics are, eh. I went to like an R. Crumb ex exhibition a while ago that had like a bunch of his stuff, and like there's some interesting things, but I love it's not the best. I mean, that's the thing, people aren't, there's so many adults who aren't willing to admit they like cartoons, which is infuriating to me. Like, I remember being in high school and watching cartoons, and my, like, fucking cousin or whatever would just, would just be, like, giving me shit about it. Just like, oh, why you want to watch cartoons? I want to watch fucking Project Runway or whatever. It's like, because they're fun. They're designed to be entertaining. Meanwhile, the thing you're watching is just, like, models pretending to have personalities. And listen, I like Tyra Banks along with the best of them, but like, don't pretend like my life as a teenage robot is worse than Project Runway. If you put those things side by side, I'll tell you which one people are going to be looking to more. And let's be real, the, the real Tyra Banks project, the people sh uh, that people should be looking to is not Project Runway, or wait, Mevo's America's Next Top Model, whichever one is Tyra Banks. Um, but the better project is, of course, Life Size, the Disney Channel original movie. Life Size? The one where she's like a, a Barbie doll that becomes real. 
you have not seen that movie, I would highly recommend it. It's probably on Disney Plus with all the other DCOMs. Which is what the, the cool kids call Disney Channel original movies. Oh man, I'm, I'm like, really focused on this now. I swear, that's the thing is like, this is a thing where it's like, just hard enough. I got at least one. Um... It's just hard enough that, like, you have to really focus to be able to not miss out. I feel like... I feel like the people who are the best at this could probably just, like, have, like, the perfect motion, like, speedrunners and stuff. They probably have just, like, a perfect sweeping arc that they do that, like, gets all five at once. And they'll probably just get, like, the fi the 500, like, right at the beginning, and then they just sit around and wait for it to end. I don't think I've seen a 100% speedrun of this. I have seen a few speedruns of this. This, again, this whole series, I would say, is a great speedrun to watch. Because the, the movements are so acrobatic that it's really entertaining. I'm not gonna be able to get it. Mm. Yeah, not on pace. Only got one. Uh, uh. Nope. Ah, forty five. U.S. adult cartoons suck. I'm gonna say that right now. Like, The Simpsons was good at one point. What point it started being bad, people can argue about. Um, Family Guy, the first couple seasons... Honestly, like, before it got rebooted, it was actually pretty, like, pretty decent. Um, and then it got cancelled, and then they brought it back, and it really fucking sucked. Because whatever team was on the reboot just was no good. Um, and, yeah, there's, there's very few adult cartoons that are all that good. The handful I'll say that are good, uh, BoJack Horseman is fantastic. Um... Tuka and Birdie, who, I mean, it's by the same creator, so it's also very good. And it's getting a second season, which they originally said it wasn't going to, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, Big Mouth can be abrasive, and it's a little problematic from time to time, but, like, it's a lot better than you think. I will say uh, the art style is pretty trash. I don't know why every... Every, like, adult anime cartoon has to look like Family Guy. Or, like, a worse version of Family Guy. Like, Big Mouth, I like it. I like the characters. The writing is fantastic. Because it's got a great team of comedy writers. But, like, the, uh, the designs are so ugly. And, like, as you're watching it, like, you get over it. But, wow. Yeesh. I can understand a lot of people not, like, wanting to watch it specifically because of the designs. Um, I guess those are only Netflix stuff. I mean, most Adult Swim stuff, like, there, there's some that stuff that does not land on Adult Swim, and I can understand. I can understand people having issues with a lot of it, but, like... A lot of the early adults one was really good. Like Space Ghost, Aqua Teen Hunger Force is pretty solid. Um, Futurama. I, I didn't watch a ton of the reboot, and I've been meaning to, but like Futurama was a stellar show. 
Like, I would say even better than, um, The Simpsons. Uh, oh, and yeah, with Matt Groening, uh, Disenchantment, which is another... I, honestly, it sounds like pretty much the only good animated shows were on Netflix, but... Yeah, that's kind of the point. Uh, I don't know. Netflix just ends up, like, giving people more freedom so they can do better stuff. Ooh, I'm on pace to maybe get it this time. Um, but yeah, uh... Disenchantment was fantastic. And that's a magreening thing that's on Netflix. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Can I get it? Can I get it? I don't think I have enough. Oh, jeez. No! Oh, 488! Too shy. Too... Yeah, there was a scene um, where they introduced a, bi a pansexual character, and despite being a pretty solid, like, take on most... Um, despite being a pretty solid take on most sex ed style topics, the, the way they handled uh, pansexuality was... Pretty, pretty bad, I'll be honest. And uh, I actually have been meaning to make a video. I want to make a series of videos that explains more or less like um, it. It's pretty much just like gonna break down like different problematic scenes from media or just problematic media in general and explain, like, in a non-accusatory way, like, why it's problematic, why people have issues with it. And my main thing is I, I want to be able to make stuff like that, because far too often a lot of stuff uh, about problematic media is really condescending. And I find, like, even if I agree with it, I find it incredibly abrasive, whether it's just people who are so incredibly angry about something that they uh they they push that anger onto the people and that's an ad hominem attack that's not really a logical place to come from so no matter how right your point is it can kind of just upset people more than it really makes a point so yeah i, I want to make something that explains that stuff in a way that's entertaining and approachable and doesn't like make people feel attacked for enjoying something because guess what we all enjoy some forms of problematic media like I there's tons of like problematic stuff that people liked in the past or still like and it doesn't make you a bad person for enjoying it um, but it is important to analyze the media that you watch and like recognize like does this give me like a bad outlook on the world? Does this make me closed off from other people? Like, those those questions are very important, and that's what I want to approach. And yeah, the first thing I want to do is Ali's introduction from Big Mouth, where it tries to address pansexuality and does a very poor job of it. And being pansexual myself, like, um, I, I feel like I can articulate pretty well why I personally am frustrated by that scene. Because it's it's so close. It, it nearly does it, but they could not help themselves for a joke, and they ended up making a metaphor that just does not fit. And it, it basically turns uh, their description of pansexuality into a description of bisexuality, and not even a good one of those. So... Yeah, it's it's uh it's frustrating. And I mean there's a discussion to be had about pansexuality versus bisexuality and people make the argument that um uh pansexuality erases bisexuality and I don't really agree with that, but uh, I'll I'll get into it in the video. In general, it's better to talk about these things when I have time to uh put in the research and 
proofreading and everything to make sure that it, it is everything that I want it to be. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, when everything I've seen from New Futurama, it's definitely a different feel. Like, it still feels like Futurama, but it has a very different sense of humor than the original did. And that's not necessarily a problem. It's just, uh... It's just very distinct. One thing I realized about this with that last one is, uh, the... It actually is kind of randomized what, uh, panels you're gonna get. The colors are randomized. So, there is actually a chance that there's just not enough to get the 500. have some fun, you know? It's a stressful time being on this adventure, but you can just hang out and have some fun in this carnival ride. Like, well, yeah, it is in service of the adventure. It's just having a good time. Just having some fun. I swear I'm gonna do this this time. I'm doing my best. It's hard. It's very hard. I swear I can do it. I've done it before. Doing a little better in the coverage here, so I think I should be able to do good. I'm already on pace to do pretty well. I want to get as many as I can in here, because it's very dense. It's, it's a very dense area. And I feel like, yeah, this is where they expect you to get a lot of points. Four twenty-four. that's pretty good. Alright, 76 more points. Can I do that? Can I do that? I think so. I think so. Uh, okay. Just 29 more. Oh. Shoot. I did not get any of the big boy. Oh, oh, wait, wait. I think. I think. Yes! I did it! Okay. I did it! 520! About a hundred more. Yeah, even with that scene where Big Mouth really dropped the ball on the pansexuality thing, and like, they do that from time to time with their stuff, um, but like, they're still doing, they're still addressing issues with LGBT people and issues with sexuality and just growing up in a much stronger way because the whole premise is that it is just um it is just like all of the issues that kids have growing up but explaining it in a way that doesn't doesn't just hold back the way that a lot of kids media has to it's it's fully open about all of that stuff and yeah it can get gross and it can get uh it, it can certainly get problematic but um it's still like pretty pretty well done for what it is i think i think one thing i always th 
uh, point out and I feel is important to remember when it comes to media that's representative is the any marginalized community and is, this happens quite a bit with the LGBT community is uh, is going to be the most critical of things that represent it because um, if it does if people are not represented in exactly the way that they would like to be they can consider it bad representation even if it is a good representation of that specific character like the thing I always think about is um, especially with uh, trans representation like a lot of trans representation is heavily scrutinized and the thing is the more realistic it is the more it will be like heavily criticized and as just like bad even if it is really good because I mean that's the thing is that each transgender person has their own ah that's the other pay thing um, each transgender person has their own experiences, and so if you're not, if your work does not align directly with their experiences, some people will find issue with it. I would say that's a little immature, and that in reality the, the better thing with representation is showing a broad range of people and showing that a transgender person is not one specific thing, they are a human being with flaws and emotions and all that. But that is my own personal choice. You know, that's, uh, oh, and now that I have the audio on this, listen. <laughs> he honk. Honk honk. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my own personal take on it. I, I would never really say that someone is wrong for having their own personal take on something. Um, I may say that they're misguided, which I would certainly say with uh, something like that, but it really depends on the specific work and it depends on um, what the take is. It's really, really on a case-by-case -case basis. All right. Opened up. All right, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I'm gonna do this attraction, and then I'm going to call it for today. Um. Oh yeah, I also don't want to forget the thing there. This might be where I learned the clock and clamber beats. I do not know, but I'll find out. <laughs> yeah, before I forget, I want to make sure that I uh, learn whatever this is. Ah, the airborne A gaming. Right, that's for the boss fight in this world which is my least favorite boss fight in kind of any game. I really, really despise it, but uh, yeah, we'll see that on another stream. In the meantime, let's hoppity hop in to the Dodgem Dome. This should not be too difficult. It's basically just a mini game with three levels of difficulty. Right, that's the thing is that a lot of people feel that trans representation needs to be representative of all transgender culture, but it's in reality it doesn't. It can just be a single vertical slice or even just a single aspect. And any non. In reality, any non negative representation is positive. Like, there's not really neutral representation and some people have even argued that like um some people have even argued that all representation is positive just by giving visibility i don't know if i would necessarily agree with that but 
Um, it's sort of the there's no such thing as bad publicity argument. All right. Part two. So yeah, there's just another guy added with each one to make it a little harder. This is, it's pretty easy. Fifty points. I can do fifty. I also part of the reason they were able to make this game so quickly is because they reuse assets from the original game, but they use reuse them in clever ways that doesn't feel like a rehash and mostly just makes it feel like a fun little cameo. Just keep going for funsies. Cause otherwise, I'd just be sitting here for the rest of the uh, lot of time. One thing I really like is that uh, because all all of these segments that are supposed to have an audience, uh, the audience is supposed to be Grunty's audience. So if you're doing well, it makes really negative sounds. This is a fun little juxtaposition of what you'd expect from a game. I... yeah... I... I... I'm a little too tired... um... to get into it at the moment, but when I do those videos that I was talking about, like, I'll probably get into that at some point. Alright, let's go! Whoa! Bumper cars! For cars, going for cars. Oh, yeah, this is no problem, dude. Practically there already. Yeah. I only need to get what, 40? Are we there, dude? I mean, I, yeah, this game is for like kids, so. It isn't balanced to be that difficult, but there's still a bit of challenge. Alright, I did it! There we there it is! That's another thing I like with the streamlining is that uh, it still gives you a little jingle and stuff to make you feel accomplished, but it doesn't, like, doesn't slap a, uh, bunch of, bunch of animation in your face when you get something. All right, oh, ooh, actually, I'm gonna run up top of the, uh, big top real quick. Get this guy. Which I do not have yet. Alright. That's where I'm going to leave it at for today. So, thank you to everyone who's watching. Thank you to everyone who was watching. Thanks to everyone who watches in the future. Oh, excuse me. Thanks to everyone who watches in the future via the archive YouTube channel, which you can find uh, below here on the browser version and the uh, past broadcast tab on the browser version. You can also find my personal YouTube channel under here on the browser version, or as it says right there, youtube.com slash user slash Iggy and the ape. Uh, check out my Twitter at Iggy D kid, which is where I will tweet out whenever I'm going live. So keep up with it there. You can also follow by clicking the heart on here, which is free, and then you'll get an email whenever I go live, and I believe a notification if you have the Twitch app, and I'd greatly appreciate it. It helps me get to affiliate and everything, and yeah, once I get that, I uh, can do some real big things here. Please watch later. Check out uh, my schedule below, which is subject to change. That'll show you everything, and yeah, thank you once again for watching. Good night, everybody. 
Goodbye. Goodbye. G goodbye.